This content is brought to you by Uphold, which is a great crypto platform that I've been using since 2018. Uphold has all the top cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and all the altcoins. In fact, they have 260 plus cryptocurrencies on their platform. You can also trade precious metals, stable coins, and 37 fiat currencies. In addition, they are available in over 150 countries. And this platform is fully reserved. They do audits. So you can trust that your funds are safe. No commingling, no lending out your funds. If you'd like to learn more about Uphold, please visit the link in the description. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, Crypto Water Cooler Series, Episode 11. With me today is David, the co-host of the Next Block YouTube channel. David, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. I mean, the bull market vibes are here. Uh, as, as we're going to talk about quite a bit of stuff that's going on, uh, the market seems like it's at a pretty key inflection point. And uh, there's there's some excitement. There's some fear. You know, we'll, you know it, let's, get, let's get into it. It's a lot to talk about. Yeah, man. Um, obviously, Bitcoin has been ripping, right? Right now, it's in a cool down phase, but it broke the all-time highs, went to about 74K. So I'm very curious what happens right before the halving. March mm -hmm. is usually a down uh, month for equities. So Bitcoin's correlated, of course. And I'm hoping by April, come the halving, Bitcoin pumps past 80K. Uh, you think that's possible? Honestly, I I wouldn't be surprised if we pump past 80k before the having. Um, I mean, right now, you know, it's funny today, especially today. I was looking at so many charts from the total two, the total three, uh, the U.S. dollar, you know, to Bitcoin chart, the ETH to Bitcoin chart. Literally everything seems that like it's at a, a you know a month, and I'm looking at mostly on the monthly time frames everything is at like either support or resistance, you know, based on what you're looking at. And it really seems like the next, you know, week, maybe two weeks, where you know, especially to close out March, we're really going to see, you know, where we're headed for the month of April. Um, you know, part of me thinks, you know, how can Bitcoin, especially with the attention it's got, the ETFs approved, all the money that's flowing in, you know, there's the part of me that's like, how can it not, right, just go to new all-time highs with the having happen and, you know, the the supply being reduced, obviously, and, and hopefully miners, you know, more miners coming into the network. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't know, what, what are your initial thoughts right now with where we're at and where we could go leading into it? Yeah, I mean, you look at the chart and it looks like Bitcoin's bouncing upwards, right? But it could get rejected. Um, mm -hmm. That doesn't mean the bull market's over. We're talking very much short term right now. In yeah. the immediate. Um, I think we're going to higher highs for sure. But my hope is that, um, look, with with the narrative of the having coming up and uh, Bitcoin maybe consolidating, finding that bottom and bouncing upwards, I think there's a high probability of it going to 80K plus. Um, and then possibly some people are saying to 90K and then you'll see retail start to FOMO like crazy. I, I think the magic number, the psychological, in my opinion, is like 90K because mm. then they think not 100K is coming next. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be incredible. And of course, what we've been seeing is that meme coins have been going crazy. The liquidity is hitting the meme coins. I mean, I can't even keep up. Every day, it seems there's a new meme coin. Somebody's shilling it to me. Some new meme coin on Solana. What do you think about the meme coin craze? Yeah, well, to, to finish your thought on Bitcoin, I do think that, you know, we definitely, you know, 100K is honestly, I think possible too, right around the having and after the having for sure. Uh, and I think a lot of the pundits and a lot of the big wigs that, you know, throw out crazy numbers will be throwing out the, you know, quarter million, half a million, you know, $500,000 Bitcoin price to really suck people in. But I do think we will see, you know, it top out maybe 100, 150K, I think is maybe the top for this cycle whenever it does come. Um, but yeah, right now, if you're like me and like a lot of people, you're probably holding a lot of altcoins, right? You're, you're, you know, you know, Bitcoin can double or triple maybe your money over, uh, you know, six months, but you know, altcoins can 10 X, hundred X. And sometimes if you get the really lucky a thousand X your money. And so we need Bitcoin to, you know, to play along, right? So we need it to continue to go up. And yeah. with that, and especially the last few months with Bitcoin, pushing past those new all-time highs, you know, you know, getting above that 69K. Um, we've seen alt season run, and now we've seen meme season really start to take off. Um, I'm definitely in some meme coins. Uh, I I definitely uh, I enjoy the volatility. I enjoy the excitement uh, of it. I will say I 
I faded. Uh, I was in early on some of the best ones on Solana. I was actually telling people about uh, Popcat and Whiff, oh, yeah. uh, but I sold early because uh, one, I hated the kind of the UI, the user interface of of uh, some of the DEXs with uh, Solana. And I just didn't like the failed transactions and just staring at that spinning wheel, like hoping it would go through. And so I actually left and went to base, right? I was like, okay, wow. let me try to you know, get ahead of the curve, right? On where this meme coin season craze is going. And I was like, if Coinbase wants to build up base to be the chain, right? That they uh, onboard the next billion users with, I was like, I want to be there. So I've been over in the, in the base meme coin season and so far it's rewarding me pretty well. Nice, man. Uh, I haven't touched any of it, but I'm not a hater. You know, I'm, I'm not yeah. out there saying, oh, you suck or whatever. If you're making money, you know what you're doing. That's the important part. Um, more power to you, right? Because look, at the end of the day, we're here to make money. Yes, we love the technology. Yes, we can see the real world applications, but we can't help anybody unless we get financial freedom and, and we're able to set ourselves up for the future. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, you you have to realize that if you're in Solana meme coins, if you're in base meme coins, whatever ecosystem you're in and you're trading these things, you have to realize that right now it is a casino. And, you know, at some point the casino has to close, right? The house has to take the money, count everything and, and whatnot. And so you just make sure you, you know, you got your plan in place to get out before before they shut the doors, because once the meme coin craze dies off and, you know, that's when, you know, that's when fear really sets in and you can see some cascades and people lose money like, you know, in a few days. Oh, yeah. Sometimes even uh, just a few, a few hours, hours, right? Yeah. It dumps. <laughs> yeah. But uh, great analogy with the casino. That's how I look at it as well. Meme coins, walking into the casino, you know, you're placing your bets. You may win, you may not. And um, look, maybe not as a risk, risky or maybe the odds are not so much against you as the casino. But it, the odds at a certain level are against you eventually, you know, in, in the timeline of when these coins go live and the hype of the market and then the cool down of the market. So, mm -hmm. um, well, and I'd be, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on like, where do you think right now, especially with uh, like Ethereum, right? And, and it's, you know, I've been looking at the ETH to Bitcoin chart and that one seems like it's ready to move. You, you I just saw today, I think that the um, a Fidelity filed for a, yeah. a, you know, Ethereum ETF. So, you know, what are your thoughts there with, you know, maybe if Bitcoin is going to stay choppy for a bit, do you see Ethereum making a big move right now? Or does it, does everything is just, is just waiting for Bitcoin to make that next big move to maybe like 80K or more? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I've been trying to figure that out a bit. What I've noticed, though, is a lot of liquidity is going to Solana instead of mm -hmm. Ethereum v versus what we saw last cycle is that a lot of it was going to Ethereum mm -hmm. after Bitcoin now, right? But uh, Solana seems to be the entry point for altcoin liquidity. It's been just going crazy. Now, that could change. We're still in what some would call phase two of the bull market. 2023 was phase one. This year is mm -hmm. phase two. And then maybe 2025, we see phase three. So um, I think Ethereum and other coins like Cardano and XRP, which haven't really had any type of run, I think they're going to start moving. Um, but when is the is the question? It's not a yeah. matter of if, but when. So we'll see. Maybe Solana and meme coins are the way the market makers are pulling in people. Like, yeah. Right. And then eventually the big boys are going to run, I think. think. Yeah. I, I mean, I did see an interesting chart, though, and this is still to my 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 you know, positioning on base is there was a lot of liquidity that started flowing from Solana into some of uh, a biggest, the biggest winner was base. And I, and I don't know, I'm still bullish because I'm bullish on what Brian Armstrong and Coinbase is trying to do. And I think if you're bullish on crypto in America, you would be, yeah. you know, you want to align, even if you don't agree with everything maybe Coinbase does, right. And I don't, right. I, I don't, you know, I don't hold most, you know, big money on uh, centralized exchanges because I don't want my assets to get frozen there. Um, but I know that that comes with its own risks and rewards, but we have to be behind these people because they're the ones just like we're going to talk about today, going to battle against the SEC and corrupt uh, regulators in our space that are trying to destroy crypto and make it, you know, the innovation go elsewhere. So that's why I'm bullish on base. And I do think that, you know, as this, as Ethereum has to scale, which I think base is doing a decent job, I think you're going to see a lot of liquidity, especially if they can onboard, you know, their slogan is to onboard the next billion users onto crypto. 
they have a lot of cool things and I think in the pipeline to to do that. And so I I, I don't know. I, I think Solana, I think, you know, it is going to have to be these faster, uh, cheaper, uh, you know, chains that are going to bring, um, you know, on board the next, you know, billion users, if you want to say that. Yeah, great point. And I'm bullish on Coinbase for sure. I, I actually own Coinbase stocks, sold some, I have some as well. Um, I think with all the things that they're doing, base, uh, they're custodying all the Bitcoin ETFs. BlackRock is a partner. I mean, they partner with BlackRock Securitize to tokenize mm -hmm. investment funds on Ethereum. So, I, I mean, you can't deny that. You're, they're working with the biggest Wall Street institutions and they're doing great things. And, um, you know, they got the clear runway, I think, in the United States as the largest largest exchange and being public. And they're fighting the uh, the SEC and scumbag regulator Gary Genser. So man, can't um, get rid of him soon enough. <laughs> I know it's it's wild, man, because uh, just as news this morning broke that the judge um, did push back on Coinbase's uh, um, item for dismissal, but it doesn't mean anything major. They're just going to go no. into discovery. And uh, I, I support them all the way in fighting the SEC because uh, we're up against people who want to kill crypto and stop it because they're puppets on strings working for incumbents who are getting disrupted. Yeah. I mean, you're seeing tons of money flow into DeFi, tons of money flow into these chains, into, you know, meme coins, whatever you want to call it. Right. But that's you have to think that's money that's out of the old regime's pocket. Right. They don't want that. They want to control the system. And in a lot of these decentralized uh, applications that are being built, they lose that power because they can't control it. Uh, and so, yeah, they you know, that's the reason why I, you know, I support Coinbase. I'm there to, you know, try to do as much as I can to help, you know, onboard the next billion users into crypto. It's not easy, um, I will say, but it's getting easier. Um, I think we're still, you know, maybe a few years away from, you know, really mainstream adoption. I think really the space has to get, it just has to make it easier. I don't know, you know, and, and with wallets and just understanding yeah. the jargon, I, even to, even now with more people wanting to talk to me about crypto at the coffee shop or if I'm at, you know, at the store, or if I'm over at the beach and they, you know, I tell them I do a, a crypto podcast, they're, they're, interested and it's funny because even some people are not only interested they're like oh i i i hold you know bitcoin and crypto but then i'll spend like five minutes talking to them and everything i say still goes over their head and yeah. i'm like man like and i'm and i'm keeping it pretty pretty plain like i'm just talking about DeFi or nfts or something and they're just like you can just see the blank stares they're like yeah and look I, i'll be quite frank i have told some people just go to etf route because they're like yeah. much older I, mean, I can go tell them to move it on, go on Coinbase, get a hardware wallet, move it over there, do self custody. I can't tell them that, but I can say, hey, look, why don't you talk to your investment advisor? You get access to the 10 Bitcoin ETFs that are out there. That's the easiest yeah. thing. So and I've it, honestly and told it's, them. Uh, yeah, that's, that, that is such a unique way because so many, so much, so many people are, would be so much more comfortable just with the way you explained it. Like talk to your financial advisor, have them, you know, recommend which ETF could be good for you. And that just sounds so much better than, you know, trying to get someone to go the degen route of getting their own wallet, moving it off, and then having to handle the keys and all that mumbo jumbo. So yeah, yeah, that's why I'm ultimately bullish that we will see Bitcoin continue to rise, especially into the having and throughout this year. I mean, there's so many other factors you could even throw in with political stuff with the elections coming up. You know, I'm sure both sides want the economy to be in a good spot and not, you know, in a recession or anything like that. So who knows? Yeah, and the other thing I was gonna say, and uh, and it's related to what we were talking about with Coinbase. Coinbase we saw was going down with peak traffic at the, when the price was pumping, mm. and I hope they take the billions they're making and buy more servers because that's one of the reasons why I'm also not saying, hey, just go buy it on Coinbase. They're a trusted yeah. platform because then it goes down, and then they're gonna be messaging me, dude, what happened? I see a zero balance. Like I don't want to deal with that, yeah. right? You you know there was a ton of people who probably bought Bitcoin that day, later went back to check on their wallet and saw a balance of zero and were like, great, I'm already a part of the first rug, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 and even being on base, right? I mean, base is supposed to be scaling and making it cheaper. And they even did an upgrade a few weeks ago to make fees sub a penny. But then now that tons of people are like, oh, I want to use base, the fees at times have jumped to $2, $5. And I'm like, you know, this is, you know, this is still an issue. Like, you know, the, the space has to, you know, grow and get better if we're going to really onboard people. And that's why I also think chains like Cardano, chains like Algorand, XRP, faster, cheaper uh, chains, 
and you know they've not pumped like uh, the rest of the market but i still think their time is coming because yeah. you know real world businesses are they can't build on a blockchain that's going to go down like solana they can't build on a shaky platform that you know their their customers might pay a penny fee one day and then a 10 dollar fee the next they have to have something that's consistent that they know that they can plan for and so i'm bullish yeah. on many of those chains exactly and i think time will be um it will reveal all things and and change the landscape. I think right now we're still so early. And um, look, there, there's also the VCs and people who have big interests and big stakes in some of these tokens. So I think once though the consumer and the businesses, like you're saying, when it comes to the rubber meeting the road, that the consumer always chooses the less uh, a hard uh, you know path and with less friction and the mm -hmm. cheaper route and the faster route we uh, that you can't deny that that is just simple economics and business right they'll go the easiest route so um i think you're right on that front you had any follow up thoughts i, I was just going to say you know maybe we could transition right that into you know the blackrock and wanting to tokenize everything i mean that is a huge thing as well i think that brings and and obviously tokenizing a lot of things on ethereum that's a bullish case for you know eth as well as many other chains with who that are already have real world assets things being built on them what are your thoughts with with that big movement yeah, I was surprised how soon we saw that. You know, we've been hearing Larry Fink talk about it over the past year. I was not expecting it this soon. And um, I think, I don't know if it was a play, a kind of a chess move because they mm -hmm. want the Ethereum ETF. So they're trying to show, hey, utility, hey, we're doing all these different things with it because there's a whole other layer to this with the SEC trying to go after Ethereum now, the reports that came out, trying to classify it as a security. So I don't know if this was BlackRock's chess move in addition to their massive long-term plans to start putting different assets on the blockchain. I think this is the future. It's coming. These are just the pilots, the test runs. And I think it's, uh, it's going to be amazing. They're going to put everything on the blockchain. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'd be interested to know your thoughts. What chains right now do you see that, which chains do you think have the best uh, foot forward, I guess, for enterprise grade, real world tokenization of assets? I mean, are you, or do you think it's going to be just Ethereum is going to take the largest market share just because it, it is one of the you know largest blockchains for smart contracts? Or do you think that there's room for a lot of these uh, smaller layer ones that are faster and cheaper, um, you know, to, to steal and to, to maybe even steal the show? Yeah, I, I think it's possible because um, we're still so early that uh, some of these smaller uh, folks can, or blockchains can um, leapfrog Ethereum if, you know, the den can upgrade and all these upgrades don't fix the, the problems that are uh, the underlying problems. And mm -hmm. I give an example, I had John Wu from Avalanche on and they're working with Citibank and JP Morgan to do tokenization. So, yeah, yeah. The, you know, they're a competitor to Ethereum. So that's really big. Um, but, you know, look, it's, it's like, it's like the the dot com boom. You're not just going to have one smart contract platform to rule the entire market. There's there's going to be look. There's Google. There's Bing. There's other search engines. There's other things happening, right? Um, yes, one may be the clear leader, but there is certainly uh, a, a room for other competitors. But who will be the leader is a big question. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I still have my, you know, I still have my bets on Algorand. That's one of the ones I like a lot because I already see real world asset tokenization. I mean, I don't know if many people saw, but Lofty AI and Vesta Equity um, were both on. I'm pretty sure, like, uh, you know, mainstream TV uh, being talked about their real world a uh, asset tokenization of uh, real estate. I mean, with Lofty AI, you can literally invest and buy fifty dollar. Uh, tokens of properties that are being uh, you know listed, and then every day you're earning daily rent from the from the tenants that are paying their rent. So that's a really cool one. Even with Vesta being able to pull that equity out of your own home via uh, tokenized uh, sale of you know almost like a home equity type situation, but being able to put that out to investors and things. So you know there's tons of platforms that, like you said, can can leapfrog Ethereum because they've already solved a lot of the issues with you know, being cheap and being able to handle a high TPS, maybe they're not as decentralized in certain aspects, you know, maybe they don't have the VC backing that some of these other bigger chains do, but from a technical standpoint, they work and they work well.
Mm, yeah, absolutely. It's fascinating to watch these things play out. And, and this is why I tell people to diversify. Like, obviously, you don't, don't spread yourself too thin, but we just don't know what the winners are going to be. Um, don't, don't get me wrong. Bitcoin is that speculation layer, the rising tide, the lips all boats. So many coins will perform well. But for the long run, you know, which ones are your big bets that could uh, get the, this real world adoption and utility? But um, it's it's tricky. It depends on your investment strategy, if it's short term or long term and things like that. Yeah. Let's um, jump into the, the next bit of news. Yeah. So KuCoin getting slammed, but I was telling people, I'm not surprised by this. They did no. it to Binance. <laughs> They're just going to go after anybody who did, who did not do KYC and AML, whether it was for, for a certain period of time. And just clean up the market. That, that's all yeah. that's happening here. So I don't even see that as a negative. I see that as a positive. It's removing any risks that uh, you know may affect the prices. Yeah, there. I think it was last year. Was the you know midway last year? I think was the last time I used any uh, really big exchange that was outside of the uh, U.S. that I really just thought could get hammered. And I, I, I gave up. I pretty much stopped using MEXC. I stopped using KuCoin because so many of those like, yes, you can you can do some cool things, especially if you're trying to leverage, um, you know, and really play the you know casino game of crypto. But at the end of the day, you know, you could you could just see the cracks with, you know, random tokens maybe being held and people not being able to withdraw. Um, and, you know, you just get scared, right, when you see things like that kind of fall into place. And so to see something like this happen, happened to KuCoin, I wouldn't be surprised, especially knowing that, you know, I I just see Coinbase becoming one of the largest exchanges uh, to, to rival like a Binance, especially after everything that happened to Binance and everything is looking bullish for Coinbase to go in the future. I mean, you know that Wall Street wants to wants to see Coinbase on top. Larry Fink wants to see Coinbase on top. So, um, you know, I, I just feel like a lot of these other exchanges, if they're not doing the right things, especially if they're allowing U.S. investors to be using it, you know, you, you, you gotta, you gotta cross your T's and dot your I's. Yeah. So I, I think this news is just like, oh, okay. They, they ding KuCoin, but it's still in business. It's just aligned to the KYC AML regulations that are going uh, out worldwide. So yeah. every exchange I, and platform be warned. <laughs> yeah. I feel like right now what you're seeing, because if, like I say earlier, I've said, I've been looking at so many different charts, right? And if you look at the total two and the total three, and even just the total coin, uh, you know, crypto market cap, we are right now at a level that is testing the previous all-time highs that were set before on some of them and, and others that like, if you look back to that, to the last run, there was a lot of choppiness right here. So yeah, we're probably going to get some FUD articles, some, you know, just some articles to put out there, some things that'll happen to create some fear to make people feel like, oh, you know, okay, this is a top. We're about to, you know, have a really large correction. I want to get out. And a lot of times not saying it's going to happen, but that is a lot of times what happens right before that next big leg up. And, and if we follow what the markets have done prior, we could be looking at the next really big run for crypto. And so I think that's why you're getting a lot of this, uh, you know, SEC, you know, the the stuff with Coinbase, KuCoin. Uh, I mean, just left and right, it seems like the past few days have been, you know, a different yeah. article saying, you know, some type of FUD in the crypto markets. Yeah, like the SEC wants $2 billion from Ripple. Uh, they're <laughs> trying to go after Ethereum, where it's, there's now confusion between the CFTC and SEC. Just a mess. And I I, I think Gary Gensler is going to get more losses in court. Uh, he's on the wrong side of history here. I think Coinbase is going to kick their ass. Um, and look, the Ripple situation, they're trying to get $2 billion. Uh, they They're not going to get $2 billion. No. Uh, they're going to get some uh, level of uh, fine, which is uh, it is what it is. And then I don't think they're going to be able to show Ethereum as security uh, because there's no clarity overall for the market. And you have a, a competing agency saying, no, it's a commodity. And you guys agreed to this uh, yeah. for years. We launched the ETH futures ETFs. And so what's what's the problem? Yeah. I, I, and like I said, I think it's just, you know, it's planned, uh, you know, FUD right at a very pivotal, you know, juncture of the market where you also have to think you have a lot of new people who probably just entered the market because of the hype that Bitcoin had running from, you know, I would say the 30K range all the way up to the new all time highs and breaking it briefly. Like that probably sucked in a lot of new, you know, new traders. And what happens usually when that happens is, you get a you get a local top. You come back down. You find support before that next you know big run up. And I think that's just that's just where we are in the market. And so you just have to be ready for you know you know 
you just have your you have to have your strategy in place. Are you are you swing trading this stuff? Are you just diamond right. handing and waiting for the you know eventual blow off top? You know wh what's your strategy? For sure, yeah, definitely got to get a plan. Have a plan. Write it down and stick to that plan unless some black swan event happens and you know, oh, changes the whole thing. I will say, I did see someone made a post, uh, I think two days ago. And right now, and this is equities, right? So the stock market is, you know, it's it's gone so long without a greater than 2% correction. And the only other times it's gone certain, you know, or at least at this point was, uh, you know, dot-com bubble, 08 financial crisis, COVID-19, and then back in like the 60s. So Right now, we are definitely in bubble territory. Um, it's just, you know, it's going to be, you know, where are we? Are we, have we already topped? And is this complacency before, a, you know, a fall back down, maybe before the halving? Or are we just going to get that real blow off top, you know, sometime this year and then see a crash? So I don't know. It's it's looking dicey for sure. Yeah. So that's a great point. And, and I wrote about this in my newsletter because it is an election year. You can imagine Biden. I'm not saying I support Biden, but I'm just saying in general, every president would want the economy to look good, the mm. stock market to look good, no major crashes, right? Which would scare yeah. people and say, oh, are we going to vote this guy out? Nobody wants that or no president wants that. So I think they're playing the game of the interest rate game, right? Where they pause and I don't know if they're going to cut because historically when they do cut, something is usually breaking. It's mm -hmm. bad. And there's a huge correction. This happened right before 2008, uh, around the 2000.com. It's a very much correlated. It's interest. It's really, really interesting. Um, and it could happen after the election, you know, that yeah. correction everybody's looking for, because they're just going to keep pumping the markets. The fed may say we're not political, but they're going to be influenced by the sitting president. So, yeah. Uh, it's interesting to see what happens. And this is why there's also the thesis out there, the blow off top for the crypto market could happen this year because the markets know rate cuts are coming and there's usually a crash after that. Yeah. And, and that, you know, for a lot of people, right, there's going to be tons of people who get into the market who don't know these things and, and you know, and, but are still going to be right for a time. And that's the thing that, like, I feel like it's hard for is, is, is what I'm learning this cycle, because this is my true full, you know, bull to bear to bull cycle and and, you know, going into the next bear for me as a crypto investor and even just in stocks and whatnot. But it's, you know. There was a time when I joined in the last bull where I was right for months on end and I thought I had solved the game, right? <laughs> and so if that was where I was in the 2020, 2021 run up, like there's going to be a time this year, I believe, where many people are going to come in. They'll be right for months on end and everyone will be high fiving. Everyone will be a genius on investing right before that rug is pulled. It just doesn't feel like it's at that point of the market yet. To me, it still feels like we're in that discovery phase on where we're actually going to go. I don't know. I could be wrong. I hope I'm not wrong because <laughs> I'm I'm definitely very long on many of my alts and and you know and like I said the charts just seem to show that we're just at a at a brief pause kind of consolidation stage before that next leg up. Yeah, and then you integrate the macro factors with the Fed and the presidential election cycle. Um I don't I think that there's a higher probability of something happening after the election versus before, but we don't know. We don't have a crystal ball. Anything could happen. Maybe like the Black Swan event, right? Yeah. But I, I don't. I don't think so. And I, one of the things I've been thinking about is the crash that everybody's been waiting for. Maybe that was 2020 COVID. That was the wipeout. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, and that's where, you know, if you zoom out far enough, right, when in doubt, zoom out, if you really zoom all the way out and you look at, you know, the stock market from, you know, S&P and the NASDAQ from, from creation, I mean, it can do this for a long time, like year, you know, it can go up for years and years and years before you see that. And I think, you know, the COVID crash really that that black swan event has everybody at a heightened sense of fear. And I think that's also a, a positive for for the bulls, because people were always wondering, when's the crash coming? When's the crash coming? So when, especially in these volatile assets, when you get these 10%, 15% corrections, a lot of people just jump out. They're terrified. They're like, oh my gosh, it's coming. It's here. But, you know, you really have to zoom out and get a bigger picture on like how long these cycles can actually play out. Um, and I still see plenty of room, even if we get a decent sized correction for equities and crypto, maybe here in the you know coming weeks, months, it's to me, it's just a blip on where we're going because right. even last run Bitcoin, it had like, I think five or six, 30% or, you know, close to that corrections on its run. And, yep. you know, alts obviously had a lot more, you know, bigger corrections than that. 
stocks same. So you you have to be, you know, you have to embrace the volatility. And I, I actually just watched a clip today from one of the guys that I actually pay to get his uh, uh, critique on and, and analysis on the uh, stock market and the crypto market. But when we're at these inflection points, volatility is heightened. And that's what we're seeing right now. Like you just have to expect that when you're sitting at support or sitting at resistance, there's going to be a lot. I mean, we even saw that today with Bitcoin's price. There was like massive amount of longs and a massive amount of shorts. Yeah. Bitcoin literally wicked up right. and wicked down and wrecked both of them. So yeah. when there is when there is leverage in the market, that's what you get. Exactly. And you know, you brought up a great point where the people who are waiting for that crash, maybe that's the time to buy or whatever it may be. Um, that's good for the bulls because when it doesn't happen to the degree that they're expecting and the price keeps going, they FOMO in. And that's actually mm -hmm. good for people who are along the bulls, right? So they buy at the wrong time and they feed the fire to the bull off top. Yeah. Uh, I feel like in the, in the bear market, you know, the dips, you, you think they're, you know, you buy the dip because you think it's, it's dipped as low as it's going to go. And then it dips lower, but in the bull market, the dips, I feel like people want to get that, that nice 30, 40% pullback. Like, Oh, I sold here. I'm going to buy 40% lower. It only goes five or 8% and then it rips up and you just don't get, you know, the, the window of opportunity can be a lot smaller on the bull run. So you really just have to, like I say, if you're a swing trader, you got to have your 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 plan in place or you're going to get wrecked. Yeah. Um man, I'm excited for this bull market and I'm hoping like we you know started to show with that we enter April to this having with a, a nice pump to maybe 80 to 90, I don't know, for Bitcoin and alts keep moving. But yeah. uh exciting times, man. David, thank you so much for joining me, man. Yeah, excited. Thanks for having me on the show. And uh, hopefully when we talk next, we'll be uh, hopefully Bitcoin will be cruising to that 100K spot. And because I, I know if it does, we're going to be sitting good. That's for sure. For sure. <laughs>